This will be the first lesson in chapter 13. Uh, chapter 13 deals with trig formulas and identities. Uh, there's going to be a lot of different topics, and you can see the objectives listed here. Uh, we're going to break these down, obviously, into uh, various sections. The first section we're going to look at is 13.1, which is basic trig identities. And so this is going to walk through the basic trig identities, as well as using those trig identities uh, to prove other identities. And uh, this is getting into what's known as analytic trigonometry. Uh, anytime you uh, put analytic in front of something in math, typically this means putting algebra involved with it. So this is kind of a mixture of trig, trig and algebra. So most of the rules we are actually going to be using here are algebraic rules, even though we are going to be using the trig identities. So just to recall, uh, again, uh, if you have your, your unit circle on your axes, uh, if you pick any triangle, you know, if you're in the first quadrant here or the third quadrant, wherever you are, uh, again, you're going to have an x value. Here you have a negative x value. You're going to have a y value uh, for your height. And then you're going to have an r. And again, when you're dealing with the unit circle, that r is equal to 1. So uh, remember that sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so y over r, which in our case is 1, so we just end up with y. Uh, cosine is x over r, uh, which again, if r is 1, just gets you to x. And finally, tangent is going to be y over x. So just again, we were using that in the last chapter, but just a reminder. Um, the reciprocal trig identities, again, just a refresher, you should have seen these in previous courses. Uh, sine is the reciprocal of cosecant. So we talked about this a little bit in uh, section 12.3 when we were dealing with graphing secant and cosecant. Uh, cosecant then would be the reciprocal of sine. Again, the theta has to go with this because, again, we're always acting on an angle. Cosine is the reciprocal of secant. So secant is the reciprocal of cosine. And again, reciprocal does not mean inverse. These are just talking about flipping those ratios over. Uh, these are ratios x over uh, x over r, y over r. This is just saying flip those ratios over. Uh, tangent can either be thought of as uh, the reciprocal of cotangent. And likewise, cotangent can be thought of as the reciprocal of tangent. Or what may be useful at other times is that tangent can be thought of as sine over cosine. And again, I'm not saying theta there, but it's understood to be there because we have to act on an angle. Uh, similarly, cotangent, if we take the reciprocal of tangent, would give us cosine theta over sine of theta. So let's uh, look at a few more identities and then we'll talk about some methods of proof. Uh, just uh, real quick here. Notation, remember that when you see the squared on a function, that means you take the whole thing sine theta and then square it. It does not mean that you can bring that squared out uh, onto this theta. So sine squared theta does not ever equal, well, I guess it might possibly equal at some point, but in very rare instances, uh, will it equal sine theta squared? So uh, with that notation in mind, um, and if you kind of go back here to the triangle, uh, remember Pythagorean theorem would say that x squared plus y squared equals r squared, right? So if we instead say that cosine is x and sine is y and r is 1, we can get to the Pythagorean identity on the unit circle of sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. Uh, if we divide this by cosine squared. Then you'll see sine squared divided by cosine. Sine over cosine is tangent. That will give you tangent squared. Cosine squared divided by cosine squared is 1. And 1 divided by cosine squared will give you secant. Uh, likewise, if you had taken that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1, and instead divided by sine squared, 
then you'd see sine squared divided by sine squared is 1, cosine squared divided by sine squared, cosine divided by sine is cotangent, so you get cotangent squared, and then 1 divided by sine squared is cosecant squared, because 1 divided by uh, sine is cosecant. So these are what are known as the Pythagorean identities. They're really just based off of the Pythagorean theorem, uh, only instead of plugging in those trig identities. So you can again see how we're kind of mixing algebra. We've got these equations, but they're algebraic equations involving trig functions. So um, uh, the other thing to keep in mind, if you don't want to memorize all of these, just make sure you have this first one down, sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1, because you can always divide by cosine squared or sine squared to get these other two formulas. Also, likewise, uh, you can subtract 1 over to the other side, so you can get that tangent squared theta is equal to secant squared theta minus 1. Uh, likewise, here, you could subtract 1 over and get that cotangent squared is equal to cosecant squared theta minus 1. Uh, similarly, here, we could um, move things around and either get that sine squared theta is equal to 1 minus cosine squared theta, or that cosine squared theta is equal to 1 minus sine squared theta. All of those, again, just by memorizing one equation, you can manipulate it like crazy with algebra and get what four, five, six other equations out of it that are completely equivalent. So uh, the last thing we want to talk about in this video are the methods of proof. In the next video, we'll actually go through and do some examples, um, but it'll make it a, there's a lot of examples for this section because I want to make sure you feel comfortable. So I'm going to break it down into just kind of like the intro and then the actual execution of these, uh, the use of identities to prove trig identities. So our options here when dealing with these types of equations, you can kind of see here how we're trying to prove different things. We proved this first one, sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1, using the Pythagorean theorem. And then we used our identities involving sine and cosine and tangent and secant and all of the other trig uh, functions, and we put those together to come up with a bunch of other equations that you see here. So we started off with one equation, and we're able to come up with one two, three, four, five, six other equations just using those identities. So that's our first method is using those trig definitions that we started off with of what sine and cosine kind of mean. Um, uh, we can also substitute in known identities. So now that we have all of these identities, we don't have to reprove them. We can use them. Uh, we can factor. Um, factoring is going to come into play, so make sure you're comfortable with that. And uh, expressing all functions on one side in terms of sine and cosine, a lot of times this is helpful because then you can kind of work backwards into either factoring or using trig definitions. Again, typically the use of trig definitions is more of the use of x, y, uh, and r or 1. Um, uh, whereas the known identities are, you know, substituting in that 1 over cosine is really secant. So... I'm going to conclude the video here. The next video will actually look at some examples of how to use these methods to prove trig identities.